Sorry to interrupt. We know that you mostly wanted to focus on the U.S. tonight, and we know how tough it is for you up, out there right now. But a huge part of what makes this fight work is that we're all in it together. We in the Pacific wanted to let you know that we have your back. We're already seeing major changes in places like Kiribati, Tokelau, Tuvalu, and the Marshall Islands. But the fight for a fossil-free world is connected everywhere. And the work that you do in the U.S. directly impacts us here in the Pacific. Same here. We are fighting for a fossil-free world. We are getting lost done in Africa. From Kenya to Ghana, from South Africa to Nigeria, we are challenging coal-fired power plants. Solar panels are going up at a record rate. But it's us who have contributed the least to the problem who are the most affected. We alone can stop climate change. That's why we are looking to you in the U.S. because your country produces so much carbon. But still, we are doing our part to protect the planet. Hey, Bill. Hey, Rev. It's Naomi Klein up in Canada, and I'm wishing lots of love to the whole 350 family. And I just want to remind you guys, that we don't just need to watch the carbon. We have to watch the money. The money! It's always about the money. Bye. Yeah, Naomi's right, you know, she usually yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, for many years, 350 has focused on the money that has powered fossil fuel corporations. Naomi helped birth the divestment movement in 2012. By now, six trillion with a T dollars worth of endowments and portfolios have divested and Carter and Hall. GW, our host tonight, has begun the process of getting out of coal. Students are fighting to make sure they go further. Thank you, guys. Right there. Because lots of people are going much, much, much further. In December, Norway's Sovereign Wealth Fund, the largest pool of investment capital in the world, began divesting from fossil fuel. And it's, and it's not just stocks. Banks and insurance companies are starting to do the right thing. Last month, the huge European insurance company Axis said it would stop insuring or funding tar sand pipelines and oil, because they said it would be it's an overheating planet. The CEO said, quote, it's not sustainable and therefore not insurable. Now, that... That very same day, very same day that that insurance company did that, the World Bank, after 20 years of campaigning from old friends of ours like, say, Oil Change International, the World Bank, the World Bank announced in, that in 2019 it was going to stop funding all new oil and gas exploration. That's, that's a big deal. Yep. That's a big deal. Yep. We need not just the World Bank, we need every bank around the world to do the same. Right. And, Rev, do you know what happened earlier this month? You know the reason that, despite the president, I've been in a pretty good mood for I've weeks? I've noticed a good mood, actually. I've noticed, noticed that. Yeah. New York City, which is... <laughs> New York City, which is... No offense to the district, but New York City may be the most vital and diverse city on the face of the earth. New York City decided that it would divest from fossil fuel. Thanks to the unyielding work of local organizers, NYC took a lead right. from the district, and then it went, it went better. Not only divesting, not only divesting, but joining cities across the country in suing the five biggest oil companies wow. for climate damage. We thought, we thought you might like to hear from a leader who listened to his constituents right. to make this happen. The mayor of the city of New York, Bill de Blasio. 
Last night, the city of New York filed a lawsuit in federal court against five investor-owned fossil fuel companies most responsible for global warming. New York City leaders are taking the fight against climate change to oil companies. The city alleges the fossil fuel industry has been aware for decades that burning fuel was impacting the climate. Mayor de Blasio says the city will seek billions of dollars. I want to thank everyone gathered in Washington and watching all over the country. You are leading a fight for our lives. It's a tragedy that the Trump administration and the GOP-led Congress don't admit the truth about climate change. But we cannot and we will not wait on them. That's why New York City took two bold steps this month. We have begun to divest our pension funds from companies that own fossil fuel reserves. Ultimately, we will divest $5 billion. And that, my friends, will get the industry's full attention. And we're suing five major oil companies, Exxon, Mobil, BP, Shell, ConocoPhillips, and Chevron, for creating a climate that damages our city and endangers our people. They must pay for what they have done. People like you inspired us to make this happen. You asked for it, you demanded it, and you can make other cities and states follow. Big oil think they're living in Trump's America. They're wrong. They're living in your America. And they should be scared out of their minds by engaged, intelligent, relentless activists like you. Cities and states and the people are going to defend ourselves from rising seas and killer storms and corporate greed. We will do it ourselves. Thanks everyone and onward. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, thank you so much. Um, it's, it is truly true that organized people beat organized money every, time. every single time. Every